Uh, there was another incident in your book that caught my eye a little bit, and I was actually thinking about it, uh, and that is uh, this allegation that the general might have sired a slave child. Yes, now I have that under the heading of strange but true. Um, there is a woman named uh, Lyndon Allen Bryant who's written a book called I Cannot Tell a Lie, the story of George Washington's African-American descendants. And she is the descendant of a slave named West Ford. And um, West Ford was the son of a young girl named Venus, who was the slave of George Washington's brother, John Augustine of Westmoreland County. And there's a moral tradition in this family that when Venus was confronted by her mistress, Hannah Washington, with her pregnancy, she said, mistress, the old general is the father. Now, this is an oral tradition that's been passed down for hundreds of years and which first saw print in the 1940s. Now, in an earlier time, we would have dismissed this out of hand and said, well, yeah, it's an oral history, big deal. Um, but in light of the case of Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings, you really have to pursue these things a lot more because there was an oral tradition in the Hemings family that said Thomas Jefferson is the father of Sally Hemings' children. Subsequent DNA evidence demonstrated that there was Jefferson DNA in Heming descendants. And there was additional evidence in terms of um, who was in proximity to Sally Hemings at the time of her pregnancies, who could have been the father. And although the DNA would not say conclusively that only Thomas Jefferson would be the father, because any Jefferson male could have been, when you combine that with the other evidence, who was physically in proximity, the Thomas Jefferson Foundation, the folks who run Monticello, said, we believe that Thomas Jefferson was the father of one or all of Sally Hemings' children. So, where does that leave us with Washington? The DNA doesn't prove that George Washington was the father of West Ford. But the Mount Vernon Ladies Association, the folks who run Mount Vernon, say, well, yeah, we think West Ford probably was sired by a Washington, just not George Washington. And so you have four possible suspects. You've got George Washington. You've got his brother, John Augustine. You have his nephew, Bushrod Washington, who inherited Mount Vernon from George and who later became a Supreme Court Justice. And then you have the younger nephew, Corbin Washington. So the Ladies Association of Mount Vernon has said, if DNA science progresses, we pledge our full cooperation. But at this state of the science, we can only narrow it down to those four Washingtons who could have been the father of West Ford. You know, I was thinking about that a little bit myself, and I was wondering, you know, uh, sometimes you hear about cruel treatment of slaves, and you, you wonder if maybe with her pregnancy, uh, the name of George Washington would be enough to protect her a little bit, the, the slave Venus. And so you wonder if maybe, yes, a Washington did sire, maybe it was John Augustine, but uh, the wrath of the mistress for you know, the husband siring a slave child, why not just say it was the old general? Well, I mean, that's certainly something you have to look at. You just cannot say it was George Washington. On the other hand, you do have to pursue the evidence. You just can't protect his reputation because he is George Washington. Now, my own feeling is that it was Bushrod Washington, and I'll tell you why. Because if you look at a portrait of West Ford, and then you look at a portrait of Bushrod Washington, I mean, it is clear to me in any event that he is probably your prime suspect. Well, but that's just sheer speculation well, on my part. Well, that's the downside. We don't have a time machine. We can't go back and take there a you go. peek and find well, out. We have that. narrowed it down to at least four.